first of all, as you know, the biggest development in the last day is the fact that we now know that the former National Security Advisor, John Bolton, in his new book, in the manuscript, according to people who have seen it, who talked to the New York Times, uh, he is alleging that he heard specifically from President Trump that it was a quid pro quo, that Ukraine would only get the security assistance up to $400 million worth uh, in exchange for investigation into the Bidens. And once again, we have the Trump defending lawyers not acknowledging that fact, even though all 100 senators, I think, likely know that that's a fact and that's one they need to address because their whole defense is nobody heard from President Trump that there was a quid pro quo, even though Mick Mulvaney has said so on the record about a separate issue, but we can move on from that. This was red meat. Uh, this was red meat for Trump's base. This was red meat for uh, the president's favorite channel. Uh, this was red meat for the president's most ardent defender. If he was watching, he was very happy with what he heard over the past two or three hours. Yeah, there was a lot of insinuation, a lot of conjecture. Uh, nothing, by the way, in terms of all the quote-unquote evidence that Rudy Giuliani has uncovered in Ukraine, none of that was presented on the floor of the Senate, and I wonder why, if it's so credible. Uh, but that said, a, a few points. Um, first of all, I thought it was interesting that they used this, given that Mitt Romney is one of the three, swing, three or four swing votes in the Republican uh, Senate caucus, it was interesting that they brought out this tape of Barack Obama, then incumbent president, uh, belittling, uh, wrongly in retrospect, uh, that, uh, Mitt Romney's view that Russia uh, was the number one geopolitical foe of the United States, because obviously Romney was correct. And I think there was a lot in the presentation, especially by Eric Hirschman, uh, to remind Republicans of what a Democratic president looks like, uh, because they tried to get Obama, many of those Republicans, to give lethal aid to Ukraine. They weren't able to do so. They were able to do so uh, with President Trump, and on and on. There were a lot of things uh, that Eric Hirschman said that were just false, and Republicans in the Senate had to have known they were false. For example, while there is plenty to criticize in terms of Hunter Biden taking that deal and being on the board of Burisma, and even Hunter Biden has acknowledged it was a mistake. And while, that, while his father was in charge of U.S. Father, yeah, Ukraine policy. Absolutely, and that is, the, there's, ab, the, everyone can criticize that. There, there, it's absolutely open to criticism. The idea that Vice President Biden tried to get a prosecutor, Victor Shokin, fired in order to help his son is not only... Uh, contradicted by facts. It's contradicted by Kurt Volker, who was President Trump's ambassador or special envoy to Ukraine. The entire Western world wanted Viktor Shokin fired because he was perceived to have been corrupt. The EU wanted him fired. Anti-corruption activists in Ukraine, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, um, Republican senators wanted Viktor Shokin fired. Uh, and Republican senators have to know that. So when Eric Hirschman was saying, uh, was this really uh, the policy? Uh, the, could this really have been the United States foreign policy? Yes. Yes, it was. It was United States foreign policy. And Viktor Shokin leaving was, as far as anti-corruption activists in Ukraine were concerned, a good idea. So I, I wonder, even though I'm sure that there are people on that other channel who will be happy to hear this, Republican senators who know the facts know, well, I don't like that Hunter Biden did this. I don't like, I mean, look, if we're going to start outlawing relatives of politicians from getting board connections, I'm all for it, but it's not going to end with Hunter you, Biden. You know, it was interesting. He kept referring uh, Eric Hirschman to the New York Times, the Washington <coughs> Post, Politico, ABC News, all sorts of... The New Yorker. The New Yorker magazine, all sorts of mainstream news organizations uh, for suggesting that the president of the United States uh, had a right to raise this issue of, of, of the Bidens with uh, President Zelensky of Ukraine. It's a completely legitimate issue. And, and Hunter Biden was put on that board in 2014, and Republicans in the House uh, and Senate controlled the House and Senate. And they, ha they had every right at the time to investigate it in 2014 and 2015 and 2016 and 2017 and 2018, and they never did. But now... Joe Biden is running for president, and suddenly there is this real keen interest among Republicans in what I've already said, I think, is a swampy-looking arrangement. And, and that's, that's what doesn't pass the laugh test here. Let's get Jeffrey Tubin to weigh in. He was listening as carefully as anyone to what we heard. Uh, you, you got a little smile there, Jeffrey. 
Well, I just uh, let me give you three reactions to the whole Biden chapter. First, um, I thought Attorney General Bondi did an effective job of showing how sleazy the hiring of Hunter Biden was. I mean, there is no way to dress that up. Um, he was given a great deal of money for a job he was unqualified for. Um, and the only reason he got it is because he was the vice president's son. That's one point. Point two, her discussion and Eric Hirschman's discussion of the role of Joe Biden, the vice president at the time, was a parade of lies, just outrageously false in every fact and in every insinuation, particularly, and, and Jake, you just mentioned it, this idea that he uh, engineered the firing of Victor Shokin, the prosecutor, to benefit his son. That is a complete falsehood. It's been debunked many times, as you point out. And since Joe Biden is the one um, who is running for president, that seems to be uh, enormously important. Now, the third point, which neither Bondi nor Hirschman ad addressed, was why this, why was the president obsessed, concerned with this issue of alleged corruption in, in Ukraine instead of any other issue? And why then? Why in July of 2019? I mean, the, the idea that his only interest in, in corruption was to damage politically the, uh, his, a likely rival of his for president, that went completely unaddressed, particularly, um, again, today of all days, when the issue was the withholding of hundreds of millions of dollars just to find out, to, to obtain an investigation of the Bidens. That issue went completely unmentioned. So, you know, I think all of us knew this was coming and it came in about the package we, effect, we expect. And, and Jeffrey, I just wonder if you think, uh, how, how effective you think this is, given the fact that, look, obviously this is gonna be red meat for the president's base, and, and part of these presentations is talking to the American people, not just trying to convince these senators. And the people who wanna you know, be fed that red meat, they got it, it's, it's what they wanted. And as you note, there's a lot, of criti there's a lot to criticize in Hunter Biden being on, the, on that board. But that's not what the Senate's debating. I mean, go ahead, impeach Hunter Biden, I think you said the other day. Um, the idea is, what about President Trump's conduct? We have a higher sta uh, status and requirement of conduct for the President of the United States, and we still have this big boulder of John Bolton's allegations sitting there. Uh, the U.S. Senate, you gotta believe that a bunch of them, especially ones that wrote letters at the time uh, calling for the Ukrainian prosecutor, Victor Shokin's office to be cleaned up, they have to know the facts on that. And so how effective is it in, in trying to convince Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Mitt Romney, Lamar Alexander maybe, to stick with the president as opposed to wanting more witnesses? Well, you know, I, I think um, th there, there are different audiences here. And if you were um, a moderately to low informed viewer and all you knew about Hunter and Joe Biden was what you heard today, you'd be pretty outraged. You'd be you'd be concerned and you might be one of the people who, when the pre when the president starts holding rallies again, will be chanting, lock him up, because, you know, that's already started to happen and it will happen if Joe Biden uh, is, is the nominee. You know, as for the more sophisticated and informed audience uh, in the United States Senate, they are probably uh, less susceptible to that argument, but they are also prim primarily politicians. And, you know, they are only going to act against the president's interests if they feel like they have enough political cover to do it. You know, the, this is not the, Donald, the Republican Party. This is the Donald Trump Party. And he really wants no witnesses here. And it is going to take a lot to get those four senators uh, over the hump of um, asking for uh, or, or subpoenaing uh, John Bolton. And, you know, I, I would not presume to know how that vote is going to come out at this point. Obviously, it's changed. The, the political calculus has changed since last night when The New York Times broke that story. But I'm not prepared to say that Mitch McConnell is going to lose because I never want to make that prediction. Yeah.